Today on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The craftsmen at Stewart and Isla Morada Boatworks put their all new skiff to the test in skinny water. This is the first one we've done ourselves here from start to finish, and it's come out real nice and it's going to be a great addition to the family. Rocky Point Boatworks takes on performing some very custom work on a classic 20 foot sea craft. I'm super excited to do this, and I'm going to do my absolute best and bring out the best of what I can do for these guys to put this boat over the top. George Labonte joins Ken Sandow aboard his custom 28 Pursuit. Now for Ken and his family, this boat would ultimately prove to be much more than just a platform to enjoy water sports aboard. And Dave at Rocky Point shows how to perfectly perform maintenance on a Yamaha outboard. It's gonna educate you, help you out if you bring your boat to get service, making sure you're not getting taken advantage of, and keep your motor running at peak performance. All coming up on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over-the-top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. All right, here at Almirad Boatworks, we got our baby back. We got her back from the water. Uh, we had a few little things we, we saw that were, we, we tried to push the envelope on a little bit to make it run super quiet and, and, and perfect. Got to tweak those back a little bit. It affected some of our running characteristics. I didn't like that much. Uh, overall, she ran beautiful. I think the things we did to it now are just going to make it uh, take it over the top. So now we finally have the boat complete. We have the hatches on the boat. We have the cushions on the boat, the sea deck under the gunnels. Uh, she's ready to go. We're excited. We're going to the ramp to see what she's going to do. So we pulled away from the dock, and right up to bat, I'm like, this is just so cool, you know, we're hitting the switch, the electronics box is coming up. First off, it's security for the electronics, and it gives you this wonderful, full-blown view of a 12-inch MFD. And of course, we also used our big cup holders that we designed for Yeti-sized cups and uh, secured the cups in the way, and we're ready to get on plane. We got up on plane, and it was an immediate Notice that there's a big difference was going on here. Um, the boat got on plane faster, uh, the bow lift was much better, uh, and it was just bone dry. Performance wise, the boat was fantastic. We, we put the 115 Yamaha on there, which is probably going to be our bread and butter motor for this, for this boat. Um, we'll build some of the 70s, which are really nice and light, um, but this 115 is just you know, 51 miles an hour, um, whole shot, plenty of mid range. Um, Great fuel economy, it's the right motor for the boat. I mean, it's what we want to have on our skiff. So we fish the boat too, which is maybe obvious, but not necessarily because the boat is not completely complete. Trolling motor not wired and operational. Uh, the push-pull holder's not in place, so no push-pull on board. So, but we did what we could um, within the time frame, And yeah, we found tarpon off the beach, which is pretty late in the season, but they were there. Richie was, throwing a fly at them as usual and it was really the first time that we actually fished the boat um, and there's plenty of space on the foredeck when we designed the boat we actually made the deck larger than most comparable sized 18 foot skiffs we showed and kind of proved out what we anticipated was the stability of the foredeck um, because it wasn't flat calm of course it was one or two foot so yeah bingo you know, check another box. Um, from there, we decided to run inshore and just check on draft. So we came in, we went behind the sailfish point flats and we drifted extremely shallow. And the boat was really nicely balanced. And we, we probably truly drifted in eight, nine inches of water um, quite easily. So as we conclude on this 18 Murata, it's just been a great experience to build it. Um, a lot harder than I thought. Um, you know, I give a lot of guys credit who build skiffs. It, and you got these technical pulling skiffs are tough to do. But we, we, we've come up with a boat now that I can take anywhere and fish in shallow water, rough water, cross rough seas, get, get my family back and forth safe. We're so happy here at Murata. We, we built what we wanted to build. 
Um, this is the first one we've done ourselves here from start to finish, and it's come out real nice, and it's going to be a great addition to the family. When we come back, the team at Rocky Point Boatworks takes on custom work for a classic 20-foot sea craft. This segment brought to you by Fiberglass Coatings, the largest selection of fiberglass materials in the United States. FGCI is a leading supplier of composite materials, family owned for over 60 years and headquartered right here in Florida. We have the materials and technical expertise to service manufacturers, repair professionals, and DIYers alike. Our gel coat color matching is a favorite of seasoned professionals and weekend warriors. Access our online store at FGCI.com, call to speak with a product specialist, or visit our stores in Fort Lauderdale or St. Petersburg. FGCI is your partner on boat projects big and small. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as Rocky Point Boatworks takes a look at performing some custom work on a classic 20-foot sea craft. So recently here at Rocky Point Boatworks, we got a phone call from a friend of mine. He's looking to do a dash panel on his uh, old sea craft restoration. So happens, he happens to be a producer of the show Project Dreamboat. So super happy to go help him, so I slid on over, take a look at the project. I'm kind of impressed on how far these guys have made it, you know, between working full-time jobs and whatnot. Um, and after talking with Chris and his dad, Randy, I really realized how special the boat is to them and how much work and time they've put into this. So I'm super excited to do this, and I'm going to do my absolute best and bring out the best of what I can do for these guys to put this boat over the top. All right, so we got the sea craft. Uh, it was Chris's third boat after um, starting him off young, getting him on the water early with his first boat at 12. And after that, he progressed to the boat that we have now. Having the boat growing up was definitely amazing. A lot of good memories and the sea craft. I fished it really hard in high school for a couple of years. And um, even with all that knowledge and expertise on the water, things happen. One day I'm cruising along and I brush into a piling, but it, it wasn't, so terrible to where I couldn't keep using the boat. So I, I was still was using the boat for a little while longer. And at some point I go off to college, the boat starts to sit, my dad moves off the water. And um, we knew that in order to properly repair the boat, we were gonna have to pull the cap off. Absolutely. So one day all of a sudden I start stripping the whole thing down. I'm out in the backyard and all of a sudden, a few hours later, it's all apart. And then that's just kind of what started it. And then, um, then it was definitely not usable. And that's, that's where you stepped in, stepped and, in and started doing all the, the fiberglass work. work and the main stuff and the restoration of the boat. The damage was the front, which I did all that work. Then I closed the transit in, and then I built a live well for it. I redid all the stringers, put all new flotation foam in the front, filled in the side gunnels and raised the deck up essentially two inches. I moved the helm forward four inches and glassed it down to the deck. It was quite an undertaking since he started school. I had to pretty much do most of it myself in the beginning, and then it stopped abruptly. Yeah, I mean, I guess the biggest dilemma was just time. We we're both working full-time jobs, running a business, and then projects like that just, they sit. So 10 years later, after starting this project, we were finally able to find somebody to finish all the fairing work on the boat and then put it into top coat, put it into final paint. We wanted a super tight job. Like, we wanted it to be an A-plus finish. And you know, with the time that it takes to create that type of finish work, we just didn't have the time to put into it. So we found the right guy to finish the job. After the boat was all painted, and then the rigging finally starts, and that's like where like the light at the end of the tunnel. The bracket gets bolted on, we start to put hardware in, the T-top goes on with the upper station, that gets, all gets bolted in. Uh, we're at the stage now where it's, we're excited, we feel like it's right around the corner, but there's still so many more things to do to the boat. We're not cutting any corners. This is a lifelong project between father and son, and I hope he passes this boat down to his kid one day. So after talking with these guys, they're super passionate about this boat. It kind of gives me a little chills. So I'm gonna go ahead and put together a really, really super nice design for these guys, and just go over to the top for them. And uh, by doing all these improvements on the dash panel, it's really gonna make the boat look modern and new. Now that I'm all done with making my template, these guys are gonna hook the boat up, take it down to Bobby at Birdsall. There's a couple modifications that need to be done to the T-top. I'm gonna go ahead and continue forward and making this dash panel. I can't wait to get it ready to set up on the boat to show these guys. Chris and his father Randy dropped off their 20-foot sea craft and um, 
They've been, it's a project they've been working on for quite some time. We went over uh, quite a few things that they were interested in having done. They had an existing T-top that uh, rolled into the side of the console. They were a little concerned having the load bearing solely on the console uh, may need some console bracing inside, so we went over that. Uh, the top wasn't really set up for much wire passages through some of the aluminum tubes, so we went over some ways where we could um, get that taken care of for them. And um, basically, we want to get them on the water. They're, uh, they're excited and uh, look forward to getting, getting everything going for them. When we return, George Labonte joins dreamboat owner Ken Sandow aboard his custom 28 Pursuit in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Bird's All Marine Design. Quality marine accessories built to stand the test of time. Bird's All Marine Design has been a leader in aftermarket and custom boating accessories for over 35 years. Based in West Palm Beach, our facility specializes in the manufacturing of custom T-tops, leaning posts, consoles, rod holders, marine canvas and upholstery products, and a wide variety of anodized aluminum hardware. Come visit our spacious West Palm Beach facility anytime or visit us on the web at birdsallmarine.com to learn more about our most innovative products. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. For many of us, our time spent on a boat offers a chance to enjoy a number of different activities in the outdoors. In addition to allowing you to connect with nature and enjoy leisure time, whether it's fishing or diving or just hanging out at the beach, it also provides the opportunity for entire families to participate together and spend quality time as a group. Today, we're in Port St. Lucie, Florida to meet up with Ken Sandow and to check out his longtime owned but recently renewed 1998 Pursuit 2870 walk around and hear how he and his family have been doing exactly that for over 20 years. We really didn't know anything about a Pursuit, but when we went to look at the boat and got on it, we just really fell in love with the setup itself. We bought the boat and uh, we fell in love with it right from the beginning. We immediately took it down to the Keys because that's where we used to hang out every year as a family on our vacation. Um, so it worked perfect for diving and fishing because our family loves to do both. After the kids growing up and us growing up on this boat, things started to go wrong pretty quickly at some point. So when it became time to decide what we wanted to do with this boat, we did not want to do it ourselves. We wanted a professional to do it, and do it right, and not have to worry about it. We had a friend that uh, started his own business, uh, Dave from Rocky Point Boat Works. So Dave is very good with plastics and that type of work. So he basically redid the entire front, got everything centered really nice, got all the gauges and all the stuff nice and neat. Our live well was just a solid, uh, starboard top basically you couldn't see into it he put a clear top on it and he etched the Miami Dolphins logo into the middle of it just because that's the theme of the boat we have sea deck the entire boat but Dave is actually the one that installed all the sea deck himself just the softness on your feet all day and being out on the water diving and fishing all day long it really helps out with your knees and, and stuff at the end of the day you can de definitely tell a difference the, the biggest reason we wanted to do the Armstrong bracket was because of the diving. Um, it used to be very hard to get to the pumps and, and stuff and trying to work on them and stuff's going to break, it's going to go down, it's going to get old. So Dave really did a good job when he put the bracket on, he changed the entire back of the boat and flattened it out, put a big door, you can take the door off climb down in there if you want to and do any of the work that you need to do, switching pumps out or stuff like that. For the most part, it's opened that whole space up to where four or five people can be in the back now, comfortably fishing and having a good time. Our original motors were two strokes, so we've never had a four stroke before. And, and uh, so when we decided to repower it, we went ahead and went with the Suzuki's and, and the difference has been phenomenal, really. They are so quiet. 
Um, and not only that, but the fuel consumption was cut in half. But um, the Suzuki so far have been superior to, to what I'm used to. Now for Ken and his family, this boat would ultimately prove to be much more than just a platform to enjoy water sports aboard. It would also serve as a tool to instill values and teach his kids many valuable lessons about life in general. So there's, there's absolutely nothing that we do not do with this boat. Every aspect that you have in boating is what we like to do as a family. And it's not just about doing those things, it's, it's about taking care of the ocean as well. It's about keeping it clean. It's about taking care of the animals, not taking, killing things that you don't need to kill, you know, and eating what you do. Those are the things that my kids grew up on and I'm noticing now that my kids want to teach their kids the same exact thing. With the restoration completed, Ken took a moment to reflect on the past while looking forward to the possibilities ahead for the next generation of his family to enjoy together and the memories that they'd also be making together as a family for many years to come. After an initial investment of $42,000 and spending $75,000 on repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Ken's dreamboat comes to a total of $117,000. When we return, Dave at Rocky Point Boatworks shows how to correctly perform maintenance on a Yamaha outboard. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as Dave at Rocky Point Boatworks shows the importance of regularly scheduled maintenance for your outboard. So we just got a phone call. One of my customers needs a 100 hour service. It's very important to do your 100 hour service. No matter how well built the motor is, it's gonna need service throughout the years. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, drain the lower unit oil out. We like to do this before we remove the lower unit. Then we can tell condition. If there's any water in there, we're gonna know. You can see by the color of the old oil in the pan that that had oil in it, or water in it. Uh, this one don't, it's just got some hours on it, no big deal. There's no real big metal. You can see just a tiny bit, so it's got normal wear and tear. So now that the gear oil's out, we went ahead and tilted the motor up. We're gonna remove the prop, not only to lighten this lower unit up when we remove it, but we're also checking for a fishing line that may be caught behind the prop. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove all the mounting bolts for the lower unit. You're gonna have to remove the trim tab anode on this because there is a hidden bolt there. So always trying to check for that so you don't crack the gear housing. So now we got the lower unit off. We're gonna go ahead and lower the motor back down. This is a good time to take a look at your spark plugs to see how your engine's running. We're looking for that in the middle, like that really nice golden color on a marshmallow. That's a good clean running motor. Everything's nice and even, nothing really to be concerned about, you know, they just show normal wear. So we're gonna go ahead and put a fresh set in there and uh, call it a day. When you're installing your spark plugs, make sure there's no dirt, debris, anything like that, that you can possibly cross thread this thing in there. That could cost you a lot of dollars. On this part of the service, we're gonna check a block anode. Um, I'm choosing this one because it's one of the easiest. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop this out and take a look. It's got a little bit of scaling on it, but as you can see, it pretty much looks like new. And that also is letting me know that the inside of the block is nice and clean. We're not getting any corrosion in unwanted spots. So uh, we'll go ahead and just pop that right back in. Okay, so another part of your service, we wanna pull your thermostats out. This regulates the water coming through and tells the computer a certain temperature that gets the correct fuel burn. So when you pull them out, you wanna make sure there's not any heavy corrosion or any blockage. This thermostat had a little bit of evidence of you know, use and et cetera, so we went ahead and replaced it. Another item on your service is the fuel water separator. It's very important to service your fuel system. It's probably one of the most crucial systems on the boat other than having oil in it. So this is a good item to do every year on your 100 hour. Also, we, we did the filter on the motor make sure there was no heavy debris or water or anything like that in the cup. We're all good. We installed a new filter, O-ring, put it back on, and uh, we'll move on on our service. 
So as you can see, the oil filter is in an upside down position, so I'm not too worried about oil coming out because it's already drained out. We've got a genuine Yamaha oil filter. I highly recommend that. We'll go ahead and just spin that back down. So we went ahead and tilted our motor up. We're gonna drain the oil. You do this because if you take the plug out with the motor down, you're gonna make a big mess. So we're gonna try to limit that and we'll go ahead and loosen our uh, drain plug. We've done a lot of installs here for some steering systems. So we use a tube that's provided in the kit that actually threads up in there. And uh, when we go to tilt the motor down, it allows us to get the motor right in the bucket so we don't have any oil spilling on the ground. So when you're adding oil into the motor, hope you have a good funnel. Pay attention to what the manufacturer recommends putting in. You don't want to overfill these things and you don't want to underfill them. We're wrapping up the power head. Now we're moving on to the water pump service. Once the water pump housing is removed, we're checking out the impeller for wear and damage. What we're looking for is the impeller having memory, which it does, is normally in your, your housing like this. And if it has memory, the legs are going to tend to curve in, and you want them to put pressure out on the cup to give you the most amount of water pressure as possible, especially at higher RPMs. Generally, what you're looking for, too, is heavy wear on the plate. If it has large grooves in there, we would go ahead and replace it. But since this is not, and it's in very good condition, that's why we're only doing an impeller. It uh, helps reduce cost of the service tremendously. Like I said, I like to inspect this. Um, generally, if you get a lot of heat, this tends to fold over and block this passage. And you can see that's all you really got for water going back up into the block. So any little bit of restriction there cuts down a lot. This one looks good, so we don't have to worry. We'll go ahead and start reinstalling some of our hardware. So next, we're going to make sure that everything's lubed up properly before we install it. I like to use this, uh, this, this type of number two grease from Yamaha. It's uh, designed for the splines. And also another important place is in the midsection, there is a uh, support bushing in there for the drive shaft. We're gonna put the grease just above it because when we push the unit back up in there, it's obviously gonna push the grease downward. So everything's back on the lower unit. We're ready to install it on the engine. So once everything lined up and it seemed good to go, we went ahead and lubed up our bolts reinstalled them and installed the new trim tab an anode. We went ahead and lowered the lower unit down and installed new fluid. Once the fluid's at the proper level, you want to put some new gaskets on your uh, plugs and you're all good. So now we're at the point where we're going to go ahead and fire the motor up and we want to have water hooked up to it. Put the muffs on, we're going to make sure that the water pump's pulling and pumping properly. I recommend going to Yamaha's website. It has maintenance matters on there. It's going to educate you in what type of fluids and parts and service intervals that you need. It's going to educate you, help you out if you bring your boat to get service, making sure you're not getting taken advantage of, and keep your motor running at peak performance. Next week on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The experts at Rocky Point Boat Works finalize and splash the Twin V project. George Labonte joins Michael Lashbrook aboard his classic 23-foot Seacraft. And the 20-foot Seacraft project receives brand new power at TRB, while Dave at Rocky Point designs, builds, and delivers the one-off dash panel.